Welcome back to Work in the Verse, VR enthusiast. Thor here, and today's video is about my time with the Apple Store's team taking me through the Apple Vision Pro demo. Before we dive in, don't forget to smash that subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up to stay in the loop with all things virtual reality. First off, it's time for a shout out to the outstanding employees at the Apple Store and the team involved in creating the demo. From when I showed up at the store to register, the minimal wait time, and the experience of the demo was refreshing. Although I had to register in person, after February 5th, according to the Apple Store website as of February 2nd, if you're near an Apple Store, you will be able to register online. I highly recommend setting up a demo time, even if you've never had a VR experience before. This may be one of the best ways to experience VR because the employees were not only trained, but were encouraged to work with the AVP outside of training. One employee told me that they spent an additional six hours using the device so they could be best prepared to answer questions. She also let me know that this was the first time using a VR device where she didn't experience VR motion sickness. For the demo I experienced, I would feel it's safe even if you are or know people who are prone to motion sickness. A quick note, we won't be hearing from Rick on his demo experience because it didn't happen. When he checked the Canadian Apple Store website, he couldn't find anything AVP related. If you were lucky to get in the demo, or if you're planning on it, let us know in the comments below. Getting back to the Apple Store employees, I felt they were genuinely excited about the AVP. It didn't feel like they were just towing the company line. Even the attention to detail with the newly designed shopping bag caught my eye. It's the little things that make a difference. I got a chance to peek into the inner workings where they had an overall coordinator manager. They ensured the demo team was ready and they were even tracking metrics so they could improve the experience as time went on. In the store I was at, there were only a few people ahead of me, so everyone was learning. I may have been more nervous than the employees, but even with their first time jitters, you could tell they were well prepared to make sure everything went as well as possible. I showed up at the Apple store about 15 minutes after they opened. On my way over, I was wondering if there would be swarms of people like it was an iPhone launch. Definitely not the case, but they were prepared like it might happen anyways. Three employees were ready to greet people and they captured my information, sent me a text for a do I wear glasses questionnaire which was then used for the prep team to get ready. Very smart. While I waited for my demo time, I got a chance to see the AVP up close. There's an odd, cool factor about it. I mean, hey, it's like a pair of ski goggles or a scuba mask, but dare I say it also doesn't look quite as dorky as the Quest 3. When they called me over, they had me use their iPhone for the likeness scan. As I looked in multiple directions, the haptics kept me going through the process. Rarely did I have to look at the phone to make sure I was doing it right. Very cool. After this, it was time for them to scan my glasses. I was hoping they could use either my prescription or my Roloptics lenses since they're more current than my daily drivers. But, as you can tell here, they had to scan your glasses and the lenses needed to be connected. Once that was all done, it was time for the headset to be delivered on a tray. Nice touch! The instructions on how to put on and take off the headset were specific, and I even got a gentle scolding for forgetting the thumb-to-nose piece with four fingers on top technique. Blame it on Meta's muscle memory, right? Adjusting the strap felt similar to Halo straps, but as I experienced, it may take a few tries to get the perfect fit. Felt the urge to adjust throughout the demo because it felt front heavy, but not miserable. Kudos to the AVP's tightening dial on the side rather than the back. It feels natural, so much easier to adjust, and it's almost inaudible. Tightening works better than any head strap I've used while feeling premium too. Could I be in the headset longer than 30 minutes? I honestly don't know. After the fitting came eye calibration. I thought it was great. You know it's a good experience when you don't have to think about it unless you're a UI nerd. You know what was never mentioned? Interpupillary distance or IPD. No dials, no callouts, just look and it's done. Gestures from learning how to select with your eyes to tapping were a breeze to learn and the Apple employees coaching made learning feel natural. Pinching, dragging, and zooming felt more refined than my experience with the Quest 3. Just for grins, I got my Quest 3 out when I got home and found the movements easier to do now on the Quest 3 because I'm not trying as hard. See? Apple's already changing how we interact with VR technology. 
Apple did something brilliantly with arranging windows. When you grab the bar below the window and push away, the content gets larger, and when you pull it closer, it gets smaller. Less choppy than what you get with today's Quest experience, which requires a lot of extra work. Don't be surprised when this type of interaction becomes standard across VR platforms. While I was in the AVP, the Apple employee was following along with the demo script on their iPhone. Nice touch. I'm sure, though, after several demos, they won't have to use it as much. It's a good thing that they have the script because when it came to look at the different photos and 3D spatial video, I got a bit ahead. It must have been the intuitive gestures, right? As for the pass-through, I would say it's an iterative step forward and not the mind-blowing experience I had when I went from the Quest 2 to the Quest 3. No knock on Apple, but rather a compliment. So to make sure I wasn't kidding myself, not only did I check the hand gestures, but I wanted to see how that pass-through looked. No doubt, the pass-through is much better than the Quest 3. The best way to explain it is the pass-through video capture on the Quest 3 is much closer to the AVP than what you see in the headset. Before I get back to the pass-through, what really caught my attention was the crown dial on the headset. No one has thought of implementing this naturally intuitive input because the controllers are always getting in the way. Bet the placement took a long time, but not once did I fumble trying to find it. This is how you adjust the degree of pass-through on the AVP, which is so different from the Quest 3, which only has two settings, on or off. Now, I know, for the VR enthusiasts who use Immersed, you may argue that you can do that, but it's not the same. Yes, you can set regions of pass-through, but in each region, it's still either on or off, and not by degrees. The demo also showcased the spatial video you've likely heard a lot about. The demo showed a still photo and also a video taken from the AVP. It felt like a grown-up version of a 3D Viewmaster. It's a bit of an uncanny view, as you know it's not real, and the quality belies the sense that there's something off. I liked what was captured on the Apple iPhone 15 much better as it felt more authentic. Maybe though I'll change my mind when one day I can reconstruct spatial video in layers like you can with images in Adobe Photoshop. One advantage that Apple has for this new 180 degree videography is that the other side is empty. There's no black band like there is in older 180 degree captures. When looking behind me, I could see the rest of my environment which, for whatever reason, gives a more natural sense of immersion. What you see behind you though depends on how much pass-through you have turned on. I looked at some 180 degree footage on my Quest 3 for comparison, and the quality of the content wasn't good, not only in video quality, but the composition itself. Just because you can set up a VR camera rig doesn't mean the result will be compelling. That's likely the reason why Apple isn't supporting YouTube VR out of the box. Details matter, and that's where Apple's demo designers come out on top, as they only selected the best content to show off the AVP in their demo. After seeing a couple of more video examples, my demo came to an end. I didn't get to see as much as the professional journalist did. I would have appreciated seeing the Avengers Tower or Game of Thrones Environments movie theater experience, the dinosaur example that was talked about, the personas, and interacting with a Mac, and so on. As I reflect on the experience of what I saw, I can see why Apple chose not to go with controllers. In their version of what a VR AR device should be able to do, they focused on what they can do well today, and that's a passive, albeit very good, entertainment device with the potential of light productivity thrown in. So, has the demo convinced me to ditch my Quest 3? For now, I'm getting back to my virtual reality with the Quest 3 to explore retro VR arcade and try out Unreal Engine VR to push the limits of my aging NVIDIA GTX 1070. Until next time, keep working the verse, and I'll catch you in the next video.